In this video, I'm going to talk about multi-threading Havoc physics. We'll start with some high-level explanation of how work is distributed across threads, and then I'll walk you through a simple multi-threading demo. The basic components of Havoc multi-threading are the job queue and the thread pool. A job queue is a list of jobs that need to be done, and a job is a unit of work, like integrating a collection of entities or performing some collision tests. A thread pool is a collection of worker threads that can take jobs from the queue and execute them, as well as add new jobs into the queue. We can take a look at the workflow in the Visual Debugger. This is a recording of a multi-threaded simulation, and to see what's going on, I'll bring up the stack graph overlay. This timeline shows what each thread in the pool did during the step that I've paused at. There are four threads, and thread 0 is the master thread, while the others are workers. The vertical blue lines show time in milliseconds, and each colored block is a chunk of work that was executed. When I mouse over a colored block, I can see the timer name for that chunk. Note that the timings are taken by profiler calls at the beginning and end of functions, so if a thread is preempted, then a chunk could include time that was actually spent running a different program. Let's zoom in more and take a look at the structure of a multi-threaded step. Initially, only the master thread is running, but eventually it will create some jobs that worker threads can pick up. We begin with some initialization, apply actions, and then move on to integration, which is broken up into many jobs that are split across all of the threads. The integration work is represented by green and yellow blocks, which are divided by thin red ones. The red blocks represent the time that the thread spent waiting to get a new job from the queue. As threads run these jobs, they can also add more jobs to the queue. For example, the dark blue broad phase jobs will find overlapping AABBs, and then create the light blue narrow phase jobs to test those overlapping pairs. Eventually, when all of the bodies have been integrated in collision detection completes, the job queue empties out and the physics step is done. The master thread sends data to the VDB, while the others idle. The next important question is how Havoc breaks up work across multiple threads. Not all bodies can be simulated on separate threads. If we have a group of rigid bodies which share constraints, either through contacts or user constraints, then we need to consider them at the same time during solving. This is because any solution of one of the constraints can cause more or less error in the others. Iterative constraint solving attempts to reduce the overall error across all constraints, therefore related constraints must be solved at the same time. To track these dependencies, Havoc organizes bodies into simulation islands. Every rigid body belongs to one simulation island, and two bodies must be in the same island if they're constrained to each other, their AABBs overlap, or there's an action that references both of them. This means that if you have two separate islands, and you create a constraint that affects one body from each of them, then the islands must be merged into one. Simulation islands are necessary for multi-threaded constraint solving and actions, since both can involve dependencies between bodies, and therefore the work for a single island cannot be split across multiple threads. Other jobs like collision detection don't have that restriction, so it's possible to run collision tests for bodies in the same island on multiple threads simultaneously. Havoc takes care of managing simulation islands for you, so you'll never have to change them manually. However, the way that the bodies in the world are divided into islands does depend on how you set up your simulation. An action, collision, or user constraint that connects otherwise unrelated groups of objects will force their islands to be merged, which can increase overhead and hurt multi-threading granularity. You can see simulation islands in the VDB by enabling the viewer. Each blue box represents an island, and bounds the bodies that it contains. If we scrub back to the beginning of the movie, initially all of the objects are divided into neat piles. There's a separate island for each wall, because the bricks in each wall are applying forces to each other, but they don't interact with the other walls. Also notice that there is no island for the ground. That's because it's a fixed body, and does not affect islands since its state is read-only. As we step forward and the sphere runs into the first wall, their simulation islands are merged, because the sphere is now in contact with some of the bricks. As it passes through the wall and separates, it's split into a separate island again, along with some of the bricks that it knocked out of the wall. As more objects are moved out of place and the simulation gets more chaotic, the islands are split apart further. We have some that are composed of only one or two bodies. We also have some where the bodies are not interacting with each other at all. The very large one is composed of a few separated bodies that could be split up, but Havoc opts not to because it's inefficient to have too many small islands. Now that we've broken down what happens in a multi-threaded step, let's look at the code that sets it up. This demo comes with the SDK and does not use the demo framework. I'll just be focusing on the parts that are specific to multi-threading. First, we set up the thread pool in the job queue. For the thread pool, we set the number of threads, which is determined by a Havoc utility function that checks the number of processors. We also allocate some thread local memory for timer statistics, which allows us to use the stack graph view in the VDB. For the queue, we just pass in the number of threads. Next we set up the world. Part of the setup code is the same as it would be for single-threaded simulations, but there are a few things to notice. First, we set the simulation type to multi-threaded. Next, after we create the world, we need to use mark for right before we can change it. 
This is necessary to satisfy multi-threading safety checks in debug builds, which verify that there are not multiple threads accessing the world simultaneously if any of them is modifying it. Finally, we must register the job queue with the physics world. The last important change is to use step multi-threaded. This function is similar to the single-threaded step delta time, but we also need to pass in the job queue and the thread pool. The multi-threaded step will automatically take care of setting up jobs, splitting them across threads, and waiting for them to complete. Setting up multi-threaded physics is pretty easy, but its behavior is complicated, so getting the best performance out of it can be tricky. Using the VDB is a great way to get insight into what's going on in your simulation. There's also more information available about multi-threading and optimization in the docs.